Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Well, there is a well-known photographer named Dan Martland. He's well-known for his exquisite photography of New York City. And according to this uh, article yesterday, he really outdid himself during a violent thunderstorm that saw a bolt of lightning strike the torch of the Statue of Liberty. And I was wondering, is this another sign from God, just like the upcoming eclipse next Monday? And when I saw this image, it reminded me of Revelation 18.23, which reads, The light of a lamp will never shine in you again. And this is referencing God's judgment on Babylon. And, you know, God has all kinds of signs in the heavens that are pointing to the judgment here on the USA and I do firmly believe God is going to extinguish the light from this nation in the days to come because of our long-standing history of rebellion. And how many more days till the eclipse now? Four more days or so? That is a big sign from the heavens. Now, this thunderstorm, it battered New York City around 6 p.m., and the photographer gives credit to luck. Well, as Christians, we don't believe in luck. Luck is from Lucifer. He wrote, I usually shoot the city in storms. He posted that on his Twitter account, but he couldn't see anything with all the low clouds. That's why he chose to go close to the Statue of Liberty, and he just wanted to see something that day. He had two cameras that were aimed at the statue, and both of those cameras caught the lightning strike. He was only out there for an hour, he wrote, and then that storm passed by pretty quick. He uses the weather app for his photography of New York City's uh, storms. The app showed that there were no more storm cells coming his way. That storm, which brought three inches of rain and coastal areas in New York and New Jersey, remain on flood warnings today. Now, that picture really was reminiscent of the lightning strike at St. Peter's Basilica. Seho and I were just talking about that earlier today. Way back in 2013, everyone was talking about that famous image. Remember when Pope Benedict said he was going to resign at the end of the month. I remember I was working at the hospital and it was all over the screens in the, in the nurse's station, uh, on the TVs, in the patient's room. Everyone was talking about it. And uh, no pope had ever voluntarily resigned up until that day. He shocked a billion Roman Catholics around the world. And then hours after Pope Benedict made that announcement, then bam, you have this famous lightning strike. Pictures of it, they went viral. Now, of course, most people know that the very first Jesuit pope, he followed after Pope Benedict, and he is still at the helm of the global Catholic Church and it also reminded us of this passage in Luke chapter 10, verse 18. I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Those were Jesus' words. Well, yesterday, in yesterday's video, I shared a, a brief vision that I had received from the Lord the night before, where the Holy Spirit showed me I was holding two spoons in my hands. And I had dropped one spoon to the ground and I couldn't reach it anymore. And when I prayed over that vision, the Holy Spirit was letting me know that the two spoons represented all of the food on the shelves for the USA and her territories. And that 50% of that food was going to go bye-bye. There's not The food availability will be diminished by 50%. And the Holy Spirit wanted me to you know, encourage people to save grains, just like Joseph. Joseph was pl uh, placed in charge of storing grains for all of Egypt ahead of the famine. You know, he listened to the, to the warning from the Lord. And so I want to say that again here today, save grains. Uh, wheat berries, I think, are the best. You can make very healthy, nutritious bread by grinding wheat berries uh, up. They are shelf-stable for, I think, more than 10 years. Also, save dried beans and such. Now, there was a comment below yesterday's video 
The person's name is S.G. And I want to briefly read his, his comment, which was a question. He wrote, how do you buy and use grains? Well, I just go to the grocery store and buy them. Just right here near my home, some people order them online by various places. There's a place called Azure Standard, A-Z-U-R-E. They say that when they buy in bulk, they get a pretty good deal. Uh, also, you have Amazon. I, I don't recommend Amazon, but uh, you can get your grains in many different places. And then he said, no one, kn no one knows what to do with all these grains. So explain to us what to do. Well, I'm just going to give you uh, one piece of information. Now, Seho and I, we use quinoa. We believe that's very, very healthy. And we buy it at our local grocery store. It's about $4.50 for a 16-ounce bag. We prepare it probably weekly. And this is how I do it. I'll just explain it to you. I take one cup of quinoa right out of the bag, and I rinse it real thoroughly. Uh, the grains are very tiny. I use a metal coffee filter as a strainer. And then I put it in the rice uh, cooker. So one cup of quinoa and two cups of water. And then I hit the, the button and voila, the quinoa is done in about 20 minutes. And then I stir it and I let that cool off. Now, while the quinoa is cooking in the rice cooker though, I get a, a frying pan and I put a small amount of meat in it, whatever I have available, whether it be sausage, a little bacon, it could be, I mean, anything. Some people can, you can use a hot dog if that's all you got. And anyways, you stir fry that with some onions and some garlic and whatever vegetables you have. Sun-dried tomatoes are one of our favorite things to mix in there. And, uh, once the quinoa is done and you take that stir fry, you put it right over top of the quinoa in a bowl. And I mix in some vinaigrette dressing. Uh, Seho makes that really delicious apple cider vinegar vinaigrette dressing. But hey, you can add anything you like on your salad. It's such a filling meal. Some people add in cranberries. Uh, I like to put some olives on mine. Oh, you can put some avocados on there too. I'll probably be adding cucumbers once those come in this summer. But you can be as creative as you want. I know there's a restaurant that serves a quinoa breakfast bowl. So it's just the plain quinoa. And then they put a sunny side up egg right on top of it. So it's a great alternative to rice. So I hope that this answer was very helpful for you, SG. Well, today's a big day for some of our friends in Kenya, a project we have been working on for a very long time. They just got done delivering the chairs and the podium and the furniture for a small Bible school that the Lord has asked us to build. And I did hear, and I saw pictures, so I'm not going to show you though, but they did get stuck in the mud for a little while with all that furniture and all the rain that's going on there, but they did get it all delivered. And so we're very excited. And just to see the doors open to the students there in the coming days, isn't God so amazing, friends? We do want to say thank you to those of you who have been praying for this ministry and for the donations and for helping with our feeding programs. We have a handful of feeding programs in Kenya and abroad, but what is this all about? What are we all doing here? Well, it's all about Jesus Christ. It's all about the gospel, making sure the gospel is preached all throughout the earth and preparing people for the kingdom of God. That is the work that the harvest workers are called to do. And uh, I'm so glad to uh, be friends with many of you and to work with you on some of this kingdom work. So friends, if you have any prayer requests, I'm going to close this out today please leave your prayer request down in the comments. You can be as vague as you want. We are honored to pray for you. And we look forward to talking to you all again real soon. We strongly, strongly believe in the power of prayer. All right, friends, we'll talk to you again real soon. Good day.